Hi everyone! We're here in the charming little town of Sholo, Arizona. A place with a big history and a name that's no bluff. In today's adventure, we're diving into the legendary story behind how Sholo got its name. Spoiler alert, it involves a high-stakes card game. After that, we'll take flight into the world of magnificent raptors at a thrilling bird show. And later, we'll explore the fascinating tales that fill the town's museum. So stick around, because Sholo has plenty of surprises up its sleeve. Mm -hmm. What'd you do? I got the right kind of peanut butter. Well, howdy there, partners. Welcome to Sholo, Arizona. Ain't just any old town with a strange name. It's got a story as wild as the West itself. Back in the 1870s, Arizona wasn't much more than a rugged frontier with plenty of land to be had. But only if you knew how to play your cards right. And that's exactly what happened with two old ranchers. Now this here card game has been going on all night between these two. And neither one of them are actually good enough to win. I reckon this land ain't big enough for the two of us, Cooley. What are we gonna do about it, Clark? <laughs> the game, one hand, winner takes all. No fancy stakes, no rules beyond the cards. They decided that the fella to show the lowest card wins. Now, folks say that Cooley had himself quite the sense of humor. Well now, looks like I've got me the low card. The deuce of clubs. He took that moment to name the whole dang place Sholo. You win, Cooley. Sholo, Arizona. You show the lowest card. And if you're driving down, the main road in town, you'll see it's called Deuce of Clubs. Now ain't that a hoot? We're about to go into the uh, nature center. White Mountain Nature Center. For the Raptor Show. Oh yeah. Discover the White Mountain Nature Center, where nature comes to you. Located in the heart of Sholo, Arizona, their mission is to connect people to the stunning natural beauty of the White Mountains through exciting events, engaging programs, and unforgettable wildlife experiences. So what can you learn here? <laughs> well, just about everything. They offer intricate lectures on topics ranging from the tiniest bugs and plants on the forest floor to the birds, bats, and frogs that fill the air with their songs. And there's always something fascinating to explore. The summer camps are a perfect outdoor adventure for kids, a fun-filled way to learn and connect with nature. Looking for more excitement? Well, head down to White Mountain Nature Center for daily raptor training exhibits in the brand new Raptor Center, where you can get up close and personal with these majestic birds. All of these activities and bringing communities together to meet these birds 
is fully supported by donators. So if you'd like to contribute and help out this community and all these birds, we've left a link for you in our description down below. They flew a lot more than I thought they would. Yeah. They were just going the whole time. They were flying it. The crow was being a little testy and didn't want to come out. But even though we only saw a couple birds, absolutely worth it. Super cool, dude. I mean, to be fair, they did try to wake her up without a cup of coffee, so... <laughs> We don't do that around here, coffee or else. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. What's happening? Thank you. We get to meet more of the um, birds. Oh, yeah? If we want to stay a little bit. Okay, yeah, we'll go over and check out some eagle. Do I need to avert my eyes? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> And it seemed like early on in the tournament, I'm glad he came out that, that the animals get to choose what they want to do and what they don't want to do. Mm -hmm. We never tie them down, force them to do anything. And I think that that touches people. What, you, okay. what got you into birds and... Like 25 years ago, I saw the Phoenix Fire Department went to a supermarket and they had some people show up from um, a rescue center and they rescued some baby owls and they're really cute little things, right? And they're running around in the parking lot of a Safeway. The rescue people came over and got them and I said, wow, that is so much coolness associated with that. I really want to do that. And so we drove up here and said, do you guys want to? And they said, yeah, that would be the coolest thing. And it's made a huge difference to the nature center, to the community. People just love to be able to see these animals and learn about them. And just keep thinking, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> I was pretty I was pretty sure he was coming to give me a kiss. <laughs> So we've been invited to watch them as they shave their nails down a little bit to make them a bit more manageable. And they gave them the choice to do it. Like, they didn't make them come over. They didn't force them. And the owl was literally just sitting there and having its nails trimmed. <laughs> you get snacks, I would make the same choice too. So she did it wrong. She said, good boy. What did you think of that owl flying over you? <laughs> I was a little terrified, but it was so exciting. <laughs> I don't really know. I'm still processing. Still processing it. Katie and I haven't been on a hike yet since we've been up here in Sholo. So we figured we'd stretch our legs and talk about the boat a little bit. <laughs> it just feels creepy to have such a steep grade of loose gravel. Huh, it kind of makes me wonder what it's going to be like when it's covered with snow and I bring the toboggan down here. Yeah! <laughs> there is the story of my brother and I more or less doing the same thing. Oh shit. The, the, we went down the street, the snow had been pushed formed an embankment which we used as a jump we both just go flying in different directions and, you know, i think before we even landed both of us were just laughing our asses up any news uh from the boat broker lately yeah a couple people have uh inquired on it and, and asked for the information on the boat and, uh, and that's really kind of where it's at. Why do you want to buy a boat in the Caribbean right now when 
it's hurricane season and you can't sail, sail the boat. Has he mentioned that more people are going to be interested soon? I'm going to say that more people are apt to buying a sailboat when sailing season starts in the Caribbean because that's where she is right now. So that starts in November. Hopefully we get a couple offers in the beginning of November. Oh cool. That's good. Yeah. Just around the corner. Yeah, it's not too far away. Nice. We were in much better shape on the boat. Yeah. Swimming, pulling ropes. You know? I know I definitely look better. I mean I have muscles. <laughs> Not just chubby cuteness. Yeah. <laughs> Could just be fooling us because of the altitude. When we walked back from uh, whiskey tasting. Yeah. You know, that was that was a seven mile walk. Yeah, we're not used to uphill stuff. I think this might be the lookout point. We should come up here with the car. Just drive the car up here, park, and do a, do a sunset. Make out sesh. By make out, I mean cookies and milk. Whoa, dude, there's a huge goop of sap. Can you see that? That's like two inches long. That's pretty big. <laughs> On a way to look out, number two. I just want to say that. Brian is very patient with me whenever we're in nature. I like to point at every other plant and rock and stick. And I tell him to look at it. I'm good as long as she doesn't touch it. Thank you, Brian. So if you guys know which ones are radio towers or cell phone towers, let me know in the comments below while I try and make some oxygen choices. Thanks. Today we're doing a little adventure in Sholo. It's kind of a funny name for a place. And I have a fun fact for you I did not tell you yet. So one of the largest forests of a certain pine is here. And it is the Ponderosa pine. Uh. The forest is huge. It spans um, over multiple states, but part of that forest is here. And it's the largest forest in the world of Ponderosa pines. A reason why I'm excited about that is because Apparently, the bark, when it's heated by the sun, smells like birthday cake, butterscotch, chocolate, some type of sweet treat. The snozberries taste like snozberries. Snozberries? Who ever heard of a snozberry? So we're gonna try eating it? They are actually edible. Driving in a new area, I never really know what to do as far as speed limits. Like on this road, I think it's 40, but everybody's doing 55, and I don't want to be that jerk who told everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then we're driving a five speed stick. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, which is what? Known as the modern day analog an car? anti theft device. What is this? Is this, is this a shifter car? I cannot drive a shifter car, right? So we got a little situation here. Oh, that's funny. That's really funny. Because nobody drives them anymore. Let's see what kind of history show love has. You guys remember what these are? <laughs> the family behind us right now is part of 
a family that has been in these parts for decades. So they have photos of the family up on a certain wall. They're going to also take a photo of their current family and get it put on the wall. Mission at the moment, we could get a couple shots right here. <laughs> this is so much fun. Mm -hmm. Oh no, there's been a forest fire. It's Model train sets, they always just bring out the kid and everyone does that. Even sooner or later, you're gonna hear somebody do a whole chick 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 chick. <laughs> Sholo Historical Museum? Yeah, super awesome, worth a visit. Yeah, and thank you to all the volunteers and people that make it possible. We really appreciate that.